Now, she had sometime around this time made comments to neighbors that Charles was worth more to her dead than alive. Now, the police became interested in Kristen when there were no other obvious suspects. Like I said, they didn't think it was a robbery because nothing of value was taken. And so if it's not a robbery and everybody else in the neighborhood likes him and can't name a single person that would want to hurt him other than his wife. So, when the police came to get her to get her statement, she contradicted herself rather a lot. She also somehow managed to admit to an affair, making local police even more suspicious. So, acting on a hunch, the Independence Police found a rifle hidden behind the hot tub that matched the bullets found in charge. Charles. The gun also had her DNA on it. Now, in the same sources where it said she, he'd been shot by a shotgun, <clears throat> what the police found was not a rifle, but a shotgun. So, I still am not sure which actual weapon it was. I tend to believe of a rifle, though. Because I imagine if someone shot multiple times by a shotgun, would bleed a plenty, and you couldn't just put them under a blanket and hide them from someone. A rifle, maybe a little more so. So, when she went to trial, she said, and she maintains her innocence to this day, she did not shoot her husband. But we have the gun. It has her DNA. And no one else was interested in killing Charles. In fact, one neighbor in specific uh, said that she, when, when Kirsten came to her door to knock on it and tell her her husband had been shot, she suspected her right away. So that's Kirsten. And what had happened apparently was they were arguing. They were arguing about something to do with the sale of the house. And Charles was kind of of the opinion that the house is sold. Let's just get through with it. Let's just get through with it and be done with it. But Kirsten had an issue. Now, I, it's not clear to me what that issue was, but she was very unhappy about it, and she was going to let Charles know. Well, at some point, they got into an argument, and then we don't know for sure what happened. We, we think he was shot in his bed, and then she just covered him up, but we don't know. But I will add this. She was sentenced to life in prison for Charles' murder. She claims that she is innocent to this day. And I guess for me, the thing about this one is, is that I've known couples that were the battling Bickersons. All they ever did was argue. All they ever did was argue. Heck, we've even lived with some of these people. And I feel bad for them because I, I, I've been in, in situations where I was with someone that all I did was argue with. But I can't say remembering ex enjoying the experience, you know? 
it was more one of those situations where wasn't real happy, but I, I also wasn't ready to tell them to go, you know, take their ruby slippers and go a walking. Yeah. So, but if you find yourself in this position, okay, if if you are with someone and all you do is argue and there is no love in your heart for this person, if the idea of hurting this person does not fill you with remorse, time to not be with that person, I think. Time to move on. Find something else, do something else. I don't care. You'll be happier when you are not with that person. There is no reason for you to make each other miserable. And there is certainly no reason for you to stay in a situation where one or both of you might hurt the other. Any thoughts on this case, Krista? Nope. Well, that and that's fine. Uh, this case actually reminds me, on a much smaller level, of the. Uh, Where the roses No, the uh, Kinney, the the Sharon Kinney case. Oh. That that our, our Krista. Had, did not like Sharon Kitty Kenny at all, at all. And part of it was Kenny was a philanderer, yeah. and you've got that same thing happening here with Kristen, and she's the one who went after her hubby. So I think Kristen's like, "Nope, you are not a good person, and I don't have anything nice to say about you." <laughs> Yes, sorry. Or Kirsten, we don't know. But the point is, the point is, I think our Krista is just kind of done with people behaving badly. So let's take a moment for a word from our sponsors, and then we'll get into the other half of our Independence Deadly Women episode. Hey, hon. Hi, Chris. Awesome. Good to hear. So now it's time to talk about Randy and Teresa Stone. Randy was a former Marine who had re-met his childhood sweetheart, whose name was Teresa Greenawalt. They, they were together for a while, and they got married very quickly. And by all accounts, Randy loved Teresa very much. Randy was married to Teresa for 19 years. He owned his own insurance office where Teresa worked. He loved Teresa, and even functions where they were not together, they kept uh, in near constant contact via phone. If she wasn't calling him, he was calling her, or they were texting each other but they were always in contact. It was one of those things that people just knew that about them, you know? He was found murdered with money on his desk, so the police did not believe that robbery was a motive. Right. Randy was very active in their church, and he drove the church bus. He was given a stirring eulogy by their pastor, David Love. That name sounds good. Yeah, keep paying attention because it's there's more familiar coming. Uh-huh. Teresa Stone. She had a long time affair with their pastor, David Stone. Told you. Yeah. Police found a torn up letter in the trash next to her desk, which came from someone other than Randy. And she brushed it off, claiming it was from a secret admirer 
but that didn't hold any water to the police. Especially when, when they were asking her about it, they left. But when the police leave and leave you in the interrogation room, the cameras are still running. Well, of course. And the thing that she said after was, well, I forgot about that. <laughs> now, I don't care if she was completely innocent. When you say something like that, mm -hmm. it sounds as if you did something mm -hmm. or are aware of something that was done. But suddenly the police have a whole lot more questions they want to ask you. Further investigation into Teresa proved that she had been having an affair with David for some time, and the two even had burner phones so they could talk to each other without their spouse's knowledge. Well, they were trying to be smart about it. <laughs> Police knew that on March 10th, she had texted that she was ready for Randy to be dead. Police interviewed Teresa, who had said that she had let David into the garage and had given him access to Randy's guns. So, she opens the door to the garage. Here, come, take some of my husband's guns mm -hmm. to kill my husband. Randy was, they, they, by matching bullets, they know that Randy was killed with one of his own guns. Teresa was sentenced to eight years for conspiracy to commit murder. She has been, since been released and with, and is with her new man, about whom I know nothing. David Stone, on the other hand, was sentenced to life in prison for murder. He is currently incarcerated at the Southeast Correctional Center in Charleston, Missouri, where his earliest opportunity for parole will be in 2036. I, okay, I feel like Teresa got off light. I think that's, I think that's fair. I, I definitely, I, I can agree with you on that. I definitely think that if you were in league with somebody else to kill your husband, and they went, they did kill your husband after the two of you talked about it, and you basically came out and said, I'm ready for him to be dead, opened the garage door and said, here, here's some guns, and walked away, I don't think that eight years is anywhere near enough for you to be able to say that that's a good thing. Also, I do not know that I would trust being her new man. Okay. Now, David Love, when they found him, he was living in, I want to say, North Carolina. Oh, did he run? Well, he was working for a tree. He quit being a pastor and was working for a trucking firm at that point. So, yeah, he kind of ran. But he hadn't been, like, they hadn't connected the dots when he ran. So I think he was just thinking that if he was out of sight, hopefully he'd be out of mind. Uh, turns out, no, that's not the case. But yeah, I really think Teresa Stone should have done more time. Oh, yeah. I know they, they there, I'm sure there was a reason they charged her with conspiracy. But you have her saying... I'm ready for him to be dead. And this is a guy that loved her. That it this sh shocked everybody who knew them. Because almost everybody who knew them thought they were the perfect couple. And the people who didn't who who didn't think they were